Hello, I'm Peter Fatty, talking about training next-level softball pitch recognition. The first question is probably why you should train pitch recognition. Three reasons. One, to increase team offense. Two, to prepare your best hitters for those best pitchers they may see at tournament time or at their next level of competition. And three, to differentiate you as a next-level hitting coach. Then the next question is, what exactly do we mean by pitch recognition? What we mean is the ability of hitters to pick up the pitch uh, before the ball is even released by movements of the, of the pitcher, whether that's a locking out a front knee for a drop ball or getting, getting a, a, a bent knee and inside a rise ball or, or whatever it might be, uh, before the release, at the release of the pitch, and immediately out of the hand. We're talking about the first third at most of ball flight. Now, there's three things that a, a pitch can do. Any pitch, it can come straight on in as A, you're lucky if you get one of those. B, a pitch that looks like a strike and ends up out of the strike zone. Or C, a pitch that starts out of the strike zone and comes in. And our goal really is to be able to not chase the B, to not give up on the C, and to be all over the A if we're lucky enough to get it. Now, this particular special ability that we'd all recognize great hitters as having is something that's actually been studied quite deeply in sports science since the early 80s in a variety of sports, cricket, baseball, softball, return of serve and tennis, goalie play, these sort of things. Anything that's a ballistic reaction where the top performers are able to do it while seeming to have all the time in the world. And yet when they measure it, they don't have superhuman reaction time. It's something that's going on between the eyes and the brain. And the way they studied that was with this video occlusion method, where you, you get the point of view of a participant, and then you cut it off uh, at the release or at various points, and they have to guess the, the type, in this case, of pitch or the location of the pitch. So that's the method that is used in the expert novice research approach. That is, they take known expert hitters and skilled but lesser um, hitters and compare them and see if this skill differentiates them. It does, and so that lets you know that you're really on to something, both with what you're looking at with the pitch recognition and also with this as the way of looking at it. From there, then, the, the breakthrough is to, to develop it into a training program, and you have to accept that this is recognition only. So you're taking the perception action link and you're breaking it so that we can have part task, drill and practice type approach to just the recognition part. You've got other ways of working on the, on the swing mechanics and other parts of that. So this kind of um, targeted fidelity part task approach is not anything new to, to coaches. We work on a lot of things that way. But with hitting, for whatever reason, uh, we've always felt like, well, that's what comes with more and more at-bats until your, your eyes bleed. So we're just trying to take that aspect of hitting and make it just as systematic as the mechanics or strength and conditioning parts. So I started researching this in the early 2000s. That's my uh, 2005 vintage research computer. This particular subject really showed how the, the method can, can work at its best. She was a four-year starter, so you see in her first three years, she had a, a pretty modest uh, offensive output with her 218, 318, 346 slash line. She stayed in the lineup because she was a tremendous athletic center fielder. Now, we did the pitch recognition training before her senior season, and she had a, a really a, a breakout season with that. And that's because she wasn't learning to do something she couldn't do before. She could hit. She just didn't do it enough. She chased pitches. She made bad pitches about which ones to go after and, and which ones to, uh, to, to let go. Um, and so we were actually fixing what was the, the problem and uh, is the problem for a lot of really good hitters, especially as they, they get to higher and higher levels. So the thing that made this really interesting was that she had three teammates who really were the same profile. They were all right-handed, regular hitters, no slappers. Uh, they were all four-year starters. By the time they were seniors, even as juniors, they were batting three, four, five, six in the lineup with our subject being in the six hole. You can see their slash line is considerably more consistent. And going into their senior year, you actually got what you would expect to see, which is a 10 to 15% improvement across the board. 
of course, with uh, our subject, the one that really strikes out at you, stands out, is the uh, 77% improvement in slugging. And I highlight that because we really want to emphasize that this is not a passive skill. In fact, if you, if you look at the on-base percentage there, you'll realize she actually walked less than, than she had before. But that's because she was that six-hole hitter, and her job was to clean the bases of any, anybody who was left out there, and, and she did. Uh, to great effect in that season, tying a team single-season record for home runs and leading the conference in home runs and RBI, as well as being selected first-team all-conference. So that's what we can see when we take this kind of approach and are able to, to take a hitter who can hit and, and really get him to that next level. The question becomes, how do we take this, what was a research method, and turn it into a viable training method. So that's where Game Sense Sports comes into the into the picture. I'd had people over several years say, you know, we can turn this into a great product and we'll make 3D and we'll put VR glasses on them and, and all, all of this sort of thing. And we say, no, this is a Twitter simple approach. It's scientifically sound. This is the way to do it. So that's what we've got. We've got a, a number of pitchers. Every pitcher has a, a drill in it. Here they're taking a, a Allison, a college pitcher, and choosing right-handed to right-handed, right-handed pitcher to right-handed batter, right batter's box view, the uh, hitter you can see guessing using the computer app, all green means that she got it right, so there's a change-up strike, um, and choose the next pitch, you can see there's a pitch count up there, and um, you know if they're fooled, most batters are then going to usually want to get a replay of that pitch. When you get the replay, you get a little bit wider view, so you can see the the uh, plate, you can see the shape of the pitch. And actually, we want people to get lots of replays because really, what we're trying to train is what you see out of hand, what it means at the plate, out of the hand, at the plate. So we really encourage them to to get as many replays as they can in that. So we're really putting that association together. using the drill and practice method of repetition, immediate feedback, and progressive difficulty then, we're able to develop this skill that otherwise is, is pretty much um, assumed to just come with more and more at-bats. Oh, that was, a, that was a nice change up. That's the one you take off the shins. So you get 10 pitches in, she'll make her final guess, and then, um, and then get a score for the, for the drill. Now, the computer's telling her that she can start a new drill, which means you beat that one. And that's the only reward you get. You don't get any bells or whistles or, or firecrackers or anything like that. You get, uh, in this case, she's going to go in and, and choose the harder drill of that. Now, it doesn't automatically go to that. She could go on to another pitcher. Uh, but in this case, she's, she's doing that natural progression of getting the advanced. Now, she's going to see considerably less ball flight, so it gets a, a lot more challenging now. She's only seeing about um, five, six feet of ball flight out of the hand. Now, this is some of the, some of the same pitches. There's 25 pitches in the whole set, and uh, they get mixed up each time, so you can, suit, you can do the same set of 10 pitches over and over again. You won't repeat the same, same pitches in a row. So she, she finishes another 10-pitch uh, sequence. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the way that goes. We recommend doing um, four or five drills about 10 minutes at a time, maximum, no more than that. Three, four days a week, unless you're really trying to build up the skill, then maybe you do it once a day. There's a number of pitchers in there of different levels, different pitch repertoires. And you can see that there's a left-handed flip of all of the pitchers. And that's because there's so much right on right that your left-handed pitchers and uh, hitters in particular uh, may not have seen those, those left-handed um, pitchers. And so, you know, that's, that's something that a lot of teams like to use as they're preparing for a tournament. And they know they've got a, a tough lefty coming. All the pitchers are former college pitchers, uh, good pitchers with some youth pitchers also thrown in there. Again, here is a very controlled way for you as a coach, for better as a player, to work on this particular skill without the pressure of actually hitting the ball. When it really gets interesting, really gets valuable, is when this is under the direction of a coach or a hitting instructor uh, with a team or a hitting academy, and you know, you're working it with live drills so that you make that transfer from the pitch recognition work on the computer into the batting cage, into the bullpen standing in there, and then finally into the batter's box. Where? If things go as planned, we're now reading pitches much earlier, and the batter may not be able to tell you why, 
but we'll be able to uh, work down to that drop ball or get on top of that rise ball, take the the uh, curve the other way or get out in front of the screw ball or whatever hitting adjustments you teach them to those pitches because they had just that moment's earlier recognition and the confidence that brings to a, to a hitter. And that's what we're after as we attempt to train next level softball pitch recognition. Thanks for your attention. I encourage you to check out GameSenseSports.com.